Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters. Today's, my name is Brother Yehuda, and today's topic is the marriage and the resurrection, the grumble of the Sadducees. We're going to start off with the book of Luke, that's chapter 20. We're going to go from verse 27 to 38. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which denied that there is any resurrection, and they asked him, which he asked Christ, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man's brother die, having a wife, and he died without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. There were therefore seven brethren, and the first took a wife and died without children, and the second took her to wife, and he died childless. And the third took her in like manner, the seventh also. And they left no children and died. Last, last of all, the women died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For seven, and, for, for, for seven had her to wife. So Jesus answered, said unto them, The children of this world marry. And are given to mar in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to abstain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels. So what he's what Christ is telling them that marriage in the world is still death do us apart. So once you get to the kingdom, it's no more death do us apart because there's no death. So it's, it's not, no, you're not brought into marriage as far as with the one in, with, with your wife. You're brought into marriage with the gospel, with Christ. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God. Being the children of, of the resurrection, now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he called the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all lives, all lives unto him. This discourse with the Sadducees we had before, just as it is here, only that the description Christ gives of the future state is somewhat more full and large here is more definite more more concrete where he says it and give more illustration in every age there have been men of corrupt mind that have endeavored to subvert the fundamental principle of revealed doctrine and there are believers now who call themselves free thinkers but are really false thinkers so there were Sadducees in our Christ Jesus time who bantered the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Though they were plainly revealed in the Old Testament and were articles of Jewish faith, the Sadducees denied that there is any resurrec res resurrection, any future state, so resurrection may signify not only not return to the body, to life but no continuous of the soul in life no world or spirit no state or recompense and retribution for what was done in the body so in other words you say it's like you get no reward for your obedience that God wants you to walk in so it's like you died If your God promised you a reward, He promised you an inheritance. So that means all His speakings and all His teaching and His scriptures is in vain. For what? So take away this, and all the gospel falls to the ground. It is common for those that design to undermine any truth of God to perplex it and load it with difficulties. You know, try to keep you all go confused so these Sadducees did when they would weaken people's faith in the doctrine of resurrection they put a question upon the belief of it 
which they thought could not be answered either way to satisfaction. The case perhaps was matter of fact, at least it might be so of a woman that has seven husbands. Now in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be? <laughs> so she's supposed to be married to this. <laughs> they, they, I mean, that's just the knowledge man will try to have you confused with. Like, he, they, like, like if they're making sense. Whereas it was not at all matter whose she was. For when death puts on the end to the relation, it is not to be resumed. That's what you vow to. There is a great deal of difference between the state of the children of men on earth and that of the children of God in heaven. A big difference. A vast unlikeness between this world and that world, and we wrong ourselves and wrong the truth of Christ when we form our notions of that world of spirits but our present enjoyment in this world because you know you want to ignore the, the world to come but you want so you can make an excuse to have all the joy here in this world the children of men in this world marry and are given in marriage the children of this age this generation both good and bad marry themselves and give their children in marriage much much of our business in this world is to raise and build up families and to provide for them much of our pleasure in this world is our relations our wives and children's nature inclines to it marriage is instituted for the comfort of human life here in this state where we carry bodies about with us it is likewise a remedy against fornication that natural desire might not become brutal but we under direction and control the children of this world are dying and going off the stage and therefore they marry and give their children in marriage that they may furnish the world of mankind with needful recruits that as one generation passes away, another may come, and that they may have some of their own offspring to leave the fruit of their labors. Two, especially that the chosen of God is in future ages may be introduced, for it is a godly seed that is sought by marriage. Now we're going to go to the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 15. And did not he make one yet he that reside that, that he the residue of the spirit and wherefore one that he might seek a godly seed therefore take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth that's in the book of malachi chapter 2 verse 15 a seed to serve the Lord that shall be a generation to him. The world to come is quite another thing. It is called that world. But way of importance and outstanding quality notes there are more worlds than one. A present visible world which we're in and a future invisible world which is to come. And it is the concern of every one of us to compare worlds. This world and that world and give the preference in our thoughts and cares to that which deserve, deserves them. Now observe who shall be the inhabitants of that world. They that shall be accounted worthy to abstain it, that is, that are interested in Christ's merits, who purchase it for us, and have a holy meekness for it wrought in them by the spirit whose business it is to prepare us for it they have not a legal worthiness upon account of anything in them or done by them but in biblical worthiness upon account of the not compatible price which Christ paid for the redemption of the purchase possession it is worthiness and put it by which we are glorified 
as well as righteousness and put it by which we are justified, considered worthy. They are made agreeable to the world. The disagreeableness that there is in the corrupt nature is taken away and the disposition of the soul are by the grace of God. Conform to that state there are by grace made and counted worthy to abstain that world it intimate some difficulties to reaching after it and danger of coming short we must so run as that we may abstain that so shall abstain the resurrection from the dead that is the blessed resurrection for that of condemnation as Christ calls it in the book of John chapter 5 verse 29 and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation that's in the book of John chapter 5 verse 29 is rather a resurrection to death a second death and eternal death than from death what shall be the happy state of the inhabitants of that world we cannot express or conceive we're going to go to the, the book of first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 but as it is written I has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him that's in the book of Corinthians first 2 I'm sorry chapter 2 verse 9 See what Christ here says of it. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. Those that have entered into the joy of their Lord are ent entirely taken up with that and need not the joy of the bridegroom in his bride. The love in that world of love is all heavenly pure and such as eclipses and loosens the the purest and most pleasing loves we entertain ourselves with in this world of sense. Where the body itself shall be spiritually body, the delights of sense will be banished, and where there is a perfection of holiness, there is no occasion for marriage as a acting to preserve something for sin. Into the new Jerusalem, there enters nothing that defiles they cannot die anymore and this comes in as a reason why they do not marry in this dying world there must be marriage in order to the fulfilling up of the position made by death but there where there are no burial there is no need of weddings this crown this crowns the comfort of that world that there is no more death there which defiles all the beauty and damps all the comfort of this world. Here death reigns, but thence it is forever ex excluded. They are equal unto the angels. In, in the other preacher, it was said, you know, other preachers, they say they are as the angels. But here, in the true doctrine, they are said to be equal to the angels. Pairs, they have a glory and bliss no way inferior to that of the holy angels. They shall see the same sight, be employed in the same work, and share in the same joy with in the, in the something, same joy with the holy angels saints when they come to heaven shall be neutralized and though by nature strangers yet having abstained this freedom with a great sum which Christ paid for paid for them they have in all respects equal privileges with them that were free born the angels that are the native and native of the country. 
they shall be company, compa companions with the angels and converse with those blessed spirits that love them dearly and with an innumerable company to whom they are now come in faith, hope, and love. They are the children of God for sure. And so they are as the angels who are called the sons of God. In the inheritance of sons, the adoption of sons will be complete. Hence, believers are said to wait for the adoption, even the redemption of the body. We're going to go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the fruits, the, the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. But instead of groaning, you should be getting yourself prepared for the wedding. With your garment on, walking in the fruit of the Spirit, being loving and kind to one another. To wit, the redemption of our body, that's that's Romans, that's the book of Romans 8.23. For until the body is redeemed from the grave, the adoption is not complete. So you have to be, you have to go rest in peace and be resurrected from the grave so the adoption can be complete. Now are we the sons of God. First, we're going to go to the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it do not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's 1 John, verse chapter 3, verse 2. He's telling you we're going to be just like God, but we're going to see him just like God is. We have the nature and disposition of sons, but that will not be perfected until we come to heaven. They are the children of the resurrection. That is, they are made compatible of the employments and, employ and, and, and enjoyment of the future state. They are born to that world, belong to that family, had their education from it here. And shall there have their inheritance in it? They are the children of God. Being the children of God, the resurrection, God owns those only for his children that are the children of the resurrection, that are born from above, are joined to the world of spirits, and prepared for that world, the children of that family. It is an undoubted undoubted truth that there is another life after this and there were clear discoveries made of this truth in the early ages of the church we're going to go to the book of luke chapter 20 verse 37 and we're going to read 37 and 30 i mean i'm sorry 37 and 38 now that the dead are raised even moses showed at the bush when he called the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all lives unto him. Moses showed, that's in the book of Luke, chapter 20, verse 37 and 38. Now Moses showed this as it was shown to Moses at the bush, and he has shown it to us when he called the Lord as the Lord called himself, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were then dead as to our world they had departed out of it many years before, and their bodies were turned into dust, into the cave of Machpelah. How then could God say, not I was but I am the God of Abraham. It is absurd that the living God and fountain of life should continue related to them as their God. If there was, if there were no more of them and being 
that what lay into that cave undistinct distinguished from common dust we must therefore conclude that they were then in being in another world for God is not the God of the dead but of the living Luke here adds for all lives unto God that is all who like them are true believers though they are dead yet they do live their souls which return to God who gave them their souls in the first place we're going to go to the ancient books Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it that's a the book of Ecclesiastic, chapter 12, verse 7. Live to God as the Father of Spirit, and their bodies shall live again at the end of time. By the power of God, for God calls things that are not as though they were, because God is the God of, that God that quickens the dead. Now we're going to go to the book of Romans, that's chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were that's in the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 17 but there is more in it yet than God called himself the God of these patriots he meant the male head of the family or tribe that he was their felicity and portion a God all sufficient to them the, we're going to go to the, the ancient book the book of Genesis that's chapter 17 verse 1 and when Abram was 90 years old and 9 which is in today's world speaking is 99 years old the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him I am the Almighty God walk before me and be thou perfect so God told Abraham when he was name was his name is Abraham he changed his name to Abraham after that made after he made him perfect he said walk with me he said walk before me and be thou perfect God is going to show you the true love and how to walk if you're walking with them you can't go wrong they're exceeding great rewards That's we're going to go to the book of Genesis, the book of the ancient book of Genesis. That's chapter 15, verse one. After these things, the word of the Lord comes unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great rewards. Now, that's in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse one. Now, it is plain by their history that he never did that for them in this world which would answer the true intent and full extent of that great undertaking and therefore there must be another life after this in which God will do that for them that will amount to the discharge and full of that promise that God would be to them a God which is able to do for all lives to God and to and God has needed for a particular purpose to make every soul happy that lives in God and Christ through the gospel enough for all enough for each in Christ Jesus name may God be the glory as I walk live and pray in your image and in your likeness the fruit of the spirit I come in love and I leave in peace. Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, which with much love. Amen.